Welcome into Press Box Live. I'm Stan the Fan Charles, along with Ross Grimsley and ex Orioles left handed pitcher Scott McGregor. We're going to be talking spring training in just a second. But first, got to tell you what company has the expert. Actually, I have to ask you what company has the expertise and technology to make your home substantially more energy efficient, comfortable, and possibly even virus free? Well, that would be A.J. Michaels Heating and Air Conditioning in Baltimore and Annapolis at AJMichaels.com. And Super Bowl is over, but we got March Madness next month and then the baseball season all summer long. And then a whole season of football begins again. Superbook Sports, the most trusted name in Vegas. Now you can use the promo code StanCharles23 or Glenn Clark 23 to score up to $250 with their first bet bonus. Win or lose, they will match your first bet up to $250. Use the promo code STANCHARLES23 or Glenn Clark 23 all one word with no spaces. Visit Superbook.com for terms and conditions. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. We never have a problem when we're talking baseball with two great left-handed pitchers from the Baltimore Orioles past. Ross Grimsley and Scott McGregor. And Scott, I'll start off the questioning. Um, you're going to be down in spring training pretty soon. Are you still affiliated with the club in some capacity? And what will you be doing if you are? Uh, I'm just I'm just more, uh, I think you would uh, label it a, a guest instructor. But okay. uh, I'm not on, on any attachment by any coaching thing. But I just... They, they, we enjoy, we get along great. I help out for a week, uh, watch the bullpens and put an eye on things. And it's just always nice to have an extra set of eyes and help out with any, any of the drills and stuff that they need me to do. But it's just more of a, uh, you know, just a couple pair, another set of eyes. You're visiting, you're visiting instructor, so to speak. Yes. What? Tell me it's spring training. Are there some pitfalls that pitchers can fall into if they're not observed and instructed properly? I mean, are there things that you got to watch out for? Well, nowadays, back in our day, we came there to get in shape and you did the drills and, uh, you you know, with Earl, if you didn't do the cutoffs and relays right, you, you heard an earful, that's for sure. Yeah. And uh, probably it, what – the only pitfall would be if you're uh, if you're like the 12th pitcher or the 13th pitcher, it, it comes down between a few guys and the, and, and the things that will probably add up the most is how, how'd you act in spring? Did you come in shape? Uh, can you throw to the bases? Can we trust you? You know, uh, so th those things are important. Ross, go ahead. Yeah, Sc Scotty, uh, you know, with the, uh, I guess Holt went is the coordinator of the whole minor leagues now. Uh, who was in the bullpen? Uh, uh, it was Holmes, Darren Holmes, Holmes. Holmes. Yeah. And he's, he's out. I know you got a chance to talk to Holt, I believe about yeah. the situation, but it just, uh, and being the pitching coach and in charge of the whole minor league. I mean, that is a lot on your table. I don't know how he was able to do that, but uh, what was his thoughts? And, uh, uh, to tell us a little bit about that. Well, I think that he likes that part. I think he really likes it. it uh, to put his hand on the, and the up and coming guys, probably mainly double A, triple A, to make sure that they're ready, that they really get, you know, the whole system together and, and that they're doing all the things that they know that, you know, and now that he's been up there for three years as a full bullpen pitching coach, he knows exactly what's expected, what they have to do. And so, you know, I, you know, yeah, I did talk to him and I said, I don't know how, you know, he, he said, I could never really, get to the minor leagues if you're the major league pitching coach that's 24 7 yeah right so said, said now he said that he'll he he doesn't know how often that he'll get to uh to baltimore i guess he would come there and need it coming like almost like when i was doing rehab guys down in florida when it was time to come north i would come up north with him just to update everybody where he's at you know and so uh, but i just think that 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 was more his heart's desire was to do that and uh, it'll give him time to spend with his family a little bit more and and uh, do what he loves 
Yeah, I mean, that, that was it just doing the coordinating for a couple of times. That's just tremendous amount of work. It being in the big leagues, I can't imagine. But anyway, uh, whatever they were doing at the minor league level has been really uh, all around uh, with the everyday players, with the pitchers. And I know they, I think the Orioles pitching philosophy, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong and, and tell us a little bit about it, but I think it was to throw more strikes, get ahead of hitters and, and go after them. And that's uh, what you saw a lot of. Is that, is that going to be the same? Will that change? Uh, well, uh, this uh, what Drew French, the new pitching coach, yeah. uh, come in from Atlanta, and like we talked earlier, I'm pretty sure he's uh, got some uh, positive things to do. But well, what are your thoughts about that? Well, I, I, if I know Mike Elias and I know the system, what they brought, they were pretty solid in what they're doing, and I don't think they would bring somebody in that would kick against that. You know, so I'm pretty sure there'll be a twist. I'm sure there'll be a, a uh, you know, a flavor of him coming in. But, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, the philosophy was, you know, one thing I noticed and I told him is that the the catcher was, wasn't was sitting on the corners all the time. They were sitting over the plate to make him throw more strikes. But the the, the biggest key with the analytics stuff is it, it it identifies your best couple pitches and shows you that these are the ones you need to be using. And why are you using this pitch when you're getting your butt kicked with that pitch and you keep throwing it, you know, <laughs> really. And so they would just, they just really honed in on what's your strength and let's do it, you know? And, and I think that, you know, obviously. Yeah. Well, but being in spring training and uh, I know you're not down there for a long time, but, uh, and I know I've talked to you before about this. Some of the guys pick your brain and want to know pitching, pitching wise. Uh, I imagine some of the coaches, would uh, obviously do that uh, because of lack of their experience at the major league level. But uh, is it pretty easy for them to, uh, to come up to you pitchers and coaches and ask for uh, information or are eager to get some? Oh yeah. They're, they've been great. They really have been this whole group. Uh, and, and uh, the kids, you know, like the ro starting rotation now, except for, you know, you know, Burns, you know, I don't know him, but, all these guys, the outfield, the infield, all these players are the ones that I coached before I got let go. So I know them. And so when I get there, they just, they love to see me and and they're wide open, you know, and, you know, once again, it was something Flanny told me years ago when I started coaching, he goes, Mac, they're going to look you up. They're going to, you know, they're yeah. going to get on the internet. And once they see what you've done, you got them. They'll, they'll come to you and, you know, you know, so they know, who I am, you know, and, right. and the coaching staff's real good about it. They blow you up a little bit, you know, just to let everybody know what's going on. But uh, it's a real, uh, for me, it's, it's a very comfortable, enjoyable time. Great. That's, you know, outstanding. Scott, Dan, go ahead. Scott, not that, not that you're speaking for Mike Elias or the organization. I'm just asking your opinion. It seems with the, they've done such an incredible job at getting the position players, hitters, ready for the major leagues. It seems like now with the cost of pitching, and I'm not saying it wasn't there three or four years ago, but the reality of what it costs to get to buy experienced free agent pitchers is the, is the move to hope you explain that he likes that better, but it seems like it's a win for both sides because it seems like, you really want to try and get your younger pitchers up to the majors a little quicker if there's any way, because you got those five years, six yeah. years of fairly decent cost uh, preservation. Oh, definitely. I mean, uh, and you, you know, you do the math, you see how the game has changed with the bullpens. You know, you got to have, you know, you got to have your six, seven guys out there, but you got to have another seven in triple A AA or double A that can come right. fill in for when they get tired or come up a little dead arm or whatever. And, and the, or if they get into a tailspin and you're trying to win the AL East and get back to the World Series, you can't sit around and mess with that. You got to be able to sh ship them out and bring somebody up. So you have to really stay on top of it. But I'm just excited to see that, you know, you know, we, we traded for the number one guy, but then you got Grayson, you got Dean, you got you know Brandish, and you got Meansy. I mean, that's a good, that's a good starting rotation. That's a quality starting rotation. And so, you know, and picking up some of these guys they picked up for the bullpen too. Uh, 
you know, I, you know, we, you are, got every every reason to be excited. Are you of the opinion that the signing of Burns, obviously, they, I mean, the acquisition of Burns, obviously, you get a chance to acquire that guy, you're going to do it. But does this now free up Wells to go back to the bullpen? Where I'm not saying he's not an effective starter when he can get to the post, but maybe he's able to stay in better health throughout the season, pitching 70 to 90 innings than trying to trying to get 140, 160 innings. Well, he's he's been successful at both. Yeah. So it's nice to to know that he can do both. And uh and I would think that where the need is, you know that's where they're going to, they're going to put him, you know, if, the, if those five starters can come out of camp healthy and ready to go. Yeah. There's no reason why you wouldn't want to bolster your bullpen to have a guy like that out there. And you could probably stretch him out a little bit in spring, but uh, you know, either way he, he's in the past, he's, he's come up a little sore either way in the bullpen or starting. So the big key for him is just to be, be able to do a whole season. Scott, I got one other question before I turn you back over to Ross. That that in, entails uh, D.L. Hall, who I know you've been around a fair amount. No question, he's got a very talented left arm power pitcher. But you look at his body of work, the most innings he's ever pitched is 94 innings in a season. And that's not a fault of his, but it just shows a, a – that he's been unable to to go to post as much as you want a starter to go to. Is Milwaukee going to, in your opinion, will they explore him as a starting pitcher before the reality might set in that the bullpen is his place? Well, if if I'm Milwaukee and I, I look at September, I put him in the bullpen. Yeah. He was pretty darn good. He was special he down there. Change up and uh, – you know, you know, I think he's that kind of guy. You know, they're always talking, you know, Ross, you know, we all talk about starters hate the bullpen and the bullpen guys hate to be starters because their mentality is different. To me, he's he's almost a little bit of a of a Riley. The old, uh, <laughs> you know, just let the phone ring, get the ball in your hand and go get him, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and he did a great job and he was very impressive, but uh, – I don't know if on every fifth day, you know, if he would, you know, if that would just be his gig. Yeah. It's the same to me if it was Arthur Rhodes was the same way to me. I thought, I always thought he was a bullpen, a special bullpen arm, but that starter, he was miscast. Uh, yeah. Ross, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Scotty, you know, I, looking at the, the, the starters, I mean, there's uh, what, two, four, six, seven starters. Uh and I was looking at at uh, Burns, Bradish, even Rodriguez. These guys, though, have better numbers after five days rest. Is there a chance they would go with a six man rotation? Well, I I just think the way the game is and the way the Orioles are now with their analytics and all those kind of things, I don't I don't throw any of that out with a watch. Right. Say if that's what they, they think is going to be the best thing to do, then go for it. Yeah, I well, you, you've seen in the in the past the bullpen has got run down uh, the last couple months of the season, and uh, I mean they average uh, the starters are averaged about five and five point four, yeah, in, innings and in the and in eighty nine pitches on an average. I mean, do, do you think to get to get those guys more go deeper in the games and throw more pitches, it starts in spring training? I don't know, Ross. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> and, and, you know, as as hard as these guys work, and right. you watch them in the weight room, and you you get all the things that they do. And we we rolled in with a, a Bud Light in our back pocket and pitched <laughs> two hundred and fifty innings. You know, yeah. never lifted a weight. We still look, you know, strong as can be. I don't oh know. yeah, <laughs> I, I don't I don't understand it. You know, like they they put them on a prescription. As soon as they sign, you know, you can only throw 75. The next year you can only throw, uh, you know, 90 innings. You know, so what do you expect? You, you don't ever let them go, you know, but that's, 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 that's pretty that's, much yeah. everywhere too. That's a, every team does that. And they still have a massive amount of injuries. Yeah. Tommy John surgeries are, it's a, a given you're going to have that. 
Now, my other question was with, with Batista, he just, I guess he had surgery the other day and he's going to be out uh, uh, probably all of 2024. Is that going to, how big a problem or is it, will it be a problem for the bullpen? Yes, no, you know, yes, yeah. <laughs> but, sure and, and, the re, and also with Kimbrell, you know, pitching him back to back is uh, he's getting of age now and he doesn't bounce back as much. My question is obviously somebody is going to have to step up out there and, mm -hmm. and, and do a little bit more. But uh, I just wondered what your thoughts was with Batista not being out there. Well, that's where I like Wells, you know, but that's just me, you know, I, I think, you know, we got Cano, you got Kimbrell, you got Wells. Dylan Tate's coming back, hopefully. Come back. Uh, <laughs> you know, and, and but then he'll be on a prescription too, you know. You know. Do, do they do they ever ask you what you think about that particular thing? No. I'm saying, hey, what well, you know, Wells. I mean, I I know you're not gonna say nothing unless they ask you. Well, uh, if, I'm, if, if I'm in the pitcher's room and, and the topic comes up, and they, they, I'm not afraid to say something and they sure. listen, you know. Good, you know, good. You know, but uh, at the same time, you know, they they're pretty solid in what they do, and they, I'm I'm a guest, you know, and I'm you right. know I know they know what I've done, but they I they don't want me coming in there and if I can say something to the to the guys, but not to the you know not out out to the players but sure. that's just typical you know but, yeah uh yeah if i see something i'm not afraid to say something quietly right, right. Well, <laughs> you see you've, you've been, been through see something you're going to say something yeah go ahead stan uh let me take that time out right now and tell folks about the costas uh again the costas everybody in town knows about them by now but did you know that they also right now are carrying that lager beer that we've come out with, with the Saragusa Foundation um, Goose Flights. And uh, it's uh, called Goose Flights. It's a lager made specifically uh, in Baltimore by Guilford Hall Brewing Company. And now it's available in cases, six packs, and individual cans. And Acosta Sin is one of those places where you can buy a Goose Flights, a $1.98 of every can goes to the mission of goose flights, which is to fly people that are non like non medical emergencies, but transport them to where they got to go to get the treatment that they need. It's something that was a passion of Tony Saragusa's. And now the Costasin is helping us along with glory days grill, the wine source and, um, Guilford Hall Brewing Company, Wine Source, and there's one other place. I'm forgetting it right now. But the Costas Inn is participating. They also have great crab cakes, specials every night of the week. The Costas Inn, 4100 North Point Boulevard. That's the address. Take down the phone number, 410-477-1975 to order, reserve your crabs if you want to go to the Costas Inn. We're with Scott McGregor for a few more minutes. Scotty, um, Obviously, I alluded to it earlier, the acquisition of Corbin Burns. Anytime you get a guy that can can move into that number one role, not that I think Bradish and Rodriguez can't be in that level in that discussion, but this is a guy who's done it, been there. He's he's more likely to give you 200 to 215 innings than anybody else on the staff. What does that do to Brandon Hyde? And and his ability to maneuver that bullpen. Well, you know that'll be a key for him. You know, I think that uh, that it, you know, I hate I understand the term of a number one starter. Yeah, I think you need to have five. <laughs> I mean, you're in the I don't disagree. I don't disagree with you. That's what the Orioles had for a lot of years. You know, you got to have them all to you know give you five, six, seven, if they can just get that seven innings, but you know, it has to be a real smooth night for him to do that. Yeah. And that comes like what we said earlier, throwing a lot of strikes, getting ahead, working ahead and uh, being confident in your stuff and pitching to contact, but you know, your kind of contact, not crushing the ball. You know, if they, if they do that, you got a guy like that because yeah, his last three years have been really good, you know, and, yeah. and he's young enough to do that for a little while longer, but, uh, I I really like him. 
I like Meansy. If Meansy's healthy, he's a guy that can really, I think he can put the innings in. And, uh, you know, Rodriguez can too, but he's he's still learning, you know. Uh, you know, so, uh, you know, it's, you know, and Bradish was really good. So you got, the, you know, Bradish and Means and, and Corbin, those guys should be able to be guys you can count on. Start Scott, to- uh, one more thing about that. What, cause you were, you were around a lot of times where the Orioles would acquire a pitcher or when they acquired you, did you, you, you rub elbows with new people. Is there a shot that burns? And I think Ross told me he uses a cutter an awful lot to great success. That he can teach a cutter to a new pitcher that's one of his teammates now. Yeah, they do it all the time. You know, you know that's that's the thing. But everybody doesn't, you know, pick it up, and you can't, you know, force it. You know, but you you can show them, and you know, you know, there's there's certain grips. I mean, there's there's only so many grips you can put on that little ball, you know? And so, you know, it's just, if you have, I think a lot of it has to do with your arm angles, your speeds and, and, uh, and, and you can't manufacture. And that's one thing, you know, I know I go on and on, but when I came up, Palm, Flanny and I came up, Palmer taught us how to pitch, you know, but he didn't tell us to stand up straight and throw all fastballs. You know, he, he, he recognized who we were and he helped us to, become what we are and hopefully he'll have that kind of ability and uh and these guys are very receptive it's a good bunch so i don't think he's going to have a problem ross go ahead yeah well, scotty where does urban uh uh fit in yeah how about cole i forgot yeah. he's yeah. another one yeah yeah bullpen you know and uh and it'd be nice to have two lefties yeah you know you know, it'd really be nice. You know, it worked for us, you know, right, left, right, left. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah we, we, we've talked about means. What do you know? Do you know, have any insight on how he's progressing? I mean, it sounds like he's a hundred percent or pretty close. Yeah. He said he's, he's under, he's ready to go, you know? So once again, we'll find out, you yeah. know, how these guys respond and, but they've got all the pieces and they've, they've created the momentum and they've, they've tasted the, the wine, you know, so. <laughs> they're going for the barrel now. Yeah. They're going for the barrel. Hey, Scotty, I know, I know that you probably haven't met or worked with uh, uh, Povich at all. The kid we picked up from Minnesota. No. Uh, I don't think you were. Oh, with he him. was in spring training last year. wasn't Okay. He? Your yeah. thoughts, your thoughts. I was going to ask you about two guys which were Povich and then the guy we picked up in the Mancini trade, Chase McDermott. Uh, yeah. Could you talk a little bit about them? I don't. Uh, McDermott's the big, tall guy. I don't know if he was in camp last year or not. I remember Povich, you know, he's okay. kind of hold an arm, you know, and, okay. uh, he had a good year last year. Okay. Yeah. You know, he's, yeah, I mean, you've got some very interesting characters down there, you know, and uh, yeah. You know, all I saw him to throw because I didn't see any games down there, but I saw him you know, just throwing bullpens and get an electric arm. Yes. Yeah. And, and then there's another guy I know you haven't seen pitch. It's the other guy we picked up in the Mancini trade, Seth Johnson, who they knew when they acquired him was going under the knife for Tommy John about a week after the trade. And he, I think he got back at the very end of last year to pitch a few innings in the minors. He's a guy that supposedly was is getting pretty close though if he if he comes back healthy. Yeah, well, for them to you know I've seen that over the years where we've signed some guy that had the injury and you had to get it taken care of, but that's the confidence they have and yep. the doctors and the procedures and they know okay we'll sign this guy we'll have him in another year and a half and so we'll see. All Scotty, right. well, what are your what are your thoughts on uh, on holiday? Is he ready to go to the big leagues? Have you, have you seen him? I have I have not. You know, I mean, he was down here last year in spring training. So, once again, I didn't see the games down here. But uh, he's <laughs> – if nothing mm-hmm. else, he's pushed the door. That's for sure. You know, and he's like Mark Akis. They kept saying, yeah, you can't get here. And he just pushed his way onto the team back then. You know, he's a young kid and he looks like he's younger, you know, but he's – He's, you know, he's got a good DNA and 
brassy as hell. He came out 19 saying, I'm going to be in the big leagues, you know, next year. You know, I, I said that too, probably back then, but uh, I don't know. You know, I'm sure he's going to get a shot. You know, so hey, um, the got, last question I have for you is you've, you've been around several managers in major league baseball and in your time working for the Orioles and pitching different pitching um, um, positions uh, your thoughts on the job that Brandon Hyde has done uh, took over in a almost a no win situation and stayed the course and has uh, turned it around along with obviously Mike Elias and Sig have done a great job. But I was wondering your thoughts on the job Brandon Hyde has done. Oh, Brandon's been great. He's 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 you know he came in behind Buck and that's kind of like. Uh, a nice summer breeze coming behind a hurricane, you know, <laughs> I mean, uh, he was, you know, he, he was good for the guys, good temperament, uh, good baseball man, you know, didn't, you know, but he's just uh, really stayed the course and uh, really he's just the whole crew, the coaching staff. Yeah. The main difference I saw when the first year he was there and I was in spring training compared to Buck when you ran the, the day of spring training with Buck around, he was in everything, running everything, doing everything, and and you know intimidating the hell out of everybody he could. You know, it was just him. And Hyde's first year, he came out the first day or so for the meeting with the players, and he just told the coaches, "Do your thing. You know, you're the infield guy. You get that." And everybody, and uh, he he let them do their job, and it was. It's amazing. He's been very, uh, very confident in uh, doing that. So I mean, he's he, you know, and and Mike and Sig and those guys work hand in hand with him. They all, they, they all by you, know, you know, are part of the the transition that came in from Houston. So it's worked. Ross, one last yeah. question for Scotty one, before we let him go. Yeah, Scotty, you talked to Ripken? No, that was. <laughs> he's a minority yeah. owner now come on yeah no i haven't i i, I don't see cal very often you know because yeah. i'm down here in tennessee but i would right. see him at a golf tournament once in a while and but he was at the games a lot last year yeah yeah, yeah. but you know, the light bulb should have went off somebody should have known something about like if this was going to happen there's yeah. a lot of speculation that it it could I imagine – I don't know if he's down there at the first week. I imagine I might see him in, in Florida yeah. and high-five him. Hey, Just Scott, sure. thank you very much for taking the time to do this again and sharing your insights into what spring training is like. Uh, it should be a really exciting season. Yeah, yeah, it should be fun. Spring training is always fun. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, I'll see you. Hopefully, I'll be down March the 5th. Are you going to be gone by then? I'll be gone. I'm just going to be down the 17th through the 25th. All right. Yeah. Thank okay, you again everybody. for your time. All right. We'll, we'll see you this weekend. Yeah. All right. For All Ross right, Grimsley, for Ross Grimsley, Scott McGregor, I'm Stan the Fan. And uh, I'll see you Thursday night with our uh, – Zoom with Eric Garfield as we talk Oriole prospects. Reminder that we've been brought to you by A.J. Michaels, heating and air conditioning by Superbook Sports, the most trusted name in Vegas, now in Maryland, and also brought to you by the Costas Inn. That does it for now. We'll talk soon. Bye.